Caitlin, and today we're going to make a couple of 1840s caps. While, um, and we're going to do this by using the workwoman's guide, but copying an exact original. So modifying the workwoman's guide to match an original. For both caps, we're going to need the workwoman's guide. Yeah, it's an excellent book. Lots of really cool projects in here. Everything from traveling bags to sleeves. So yeah, excellent book. Highly recommend it. We're also going to need various pattern making supplies and of course trimmings. So for cap number one, I'm going to use this lace that I have. It's thicker than I would normally think to use for mid-century, but I found a picture of original cap with a lace that looks to be about this quality, so I've decided to go ahead and go with it. Um, both caps are going to need some ribbon to tie off in the back, and then for, for cap number two, we're going to use some brown silk ribbon from Timely Tresses to decorate it, and then I have this tiny itty bitty very fine lace that I think um, will be beautiful around the ruffles. And of course fabrics. So for cap number one today, I'm going to use this cotton lawn that just came in the mail yesterday, I just washed it. And for cap number two, which is going to be a fancier cap, I'm going to use this dotted Swiss muslin. Alright, we shall be working off of page 128 of the Workwoman's Guide, at least on my copy. It may be different on yours, depending on what version you have. Essentially, we're going to be making up this cap. So here's the pattern, and here's our finished cap right here. So it is um, page 128, figures 25 and 26. So the pattern says, to cut the pattern of half this neat and simple bonnet cap, let your paper be six nails wide and four nails broad. A, B is the front, curve from B past C to E, C being one nail and three quarters from the bottom and half a nail from the side, and E being two nails and a half from the top. D is the part where the net is to be doubled. In making up, plate it behind the center, raking rather lar large folds seven on each side of the middle and wrapping the folds over each other as to keep them all quite behind. Ribbon is laid on in two or three rows in the front, either simply upon the cap or covered with net. Blind it behind and put on a border and some light trimming. So it's saying those are ribbons. I'd almost rather them be tucks. However, I can't find any evidence of tucks being used. So we might just leave that plain and just have a nice plain cap very much like the original that I'm basing this off of anyway. We're going to need two pieces of paper today. We're just going to put them together like that and tape them. So it does say that the paper is six nails long and four nails broad. So if you're not used to working in nails, but you're working in inches like me, um, a nail is two and a quarter inches. So we're going to multiply 2.25, two and a quarter, by the six that we need. And that gets me 13 and a half inches. And we're going to mark 13 and a half on this side. And we're going to mark, let me get that straight, 13 and a half here. Okay. And then just turn it over, match up your two lines, and draw a straight line. And four nails, 2.25 times four, is nine. So we need this paper nine inches wide. And now we can go ahead and cut this out. Be sure you're using paper scissors, not the fabric scissors. So it says A to B is the front and A to B is on the bottom. So we're gonna put front here, just to remind us. So that was A, sometimes I like to mark them. It just makes it easier. Curve from B past C to E. So E is up here and it's where it meets up here. So let's see. E being two and a half nails from the top. So let me get out my calculator again. Two and a half times 2.25 is five and basically three, it's a little less than five and two thirds. And I don't terribly mind that this isn't perfect. You will still basically get what you need. I said it's five and something. I'm going to mark it just above a half. So this is my E, and it says C is one and a 
one nail and three quarters from the bottom, 1.75 by 2.25 is 3.9375. So just under four inches. So we're going to do four inches and do a little less, just a bit. That's how tall I need it. And it also says it needs to be half a nail down from this or from the side. So half a nail is just one and an eighth. One, there's a quarter, and there's an eighth. Oh, that was nearly perfect. So this is my line right here. So mark that as C. And it curves in and curves back out. So we're going to go from here, from B, the corner, go in, and then kind of come back. Oops. Let me see where I can do it better. And I need this to be a little bit more, yeah, more like that. Okay, that'll work. So that was E. D is the part where the net is to be down, so I can't tell if this is D or this is D, but I'm 95% sure this is D. We're going to mark that, which means it needs to be doubled, so we're going to put that on the hole. Okay, everyone, so I had to stop filming for a second because I got very confused because on the pattern, you can see that there's clearly an F here and there's a curve. Well, the directions stop at D. And it says nothing about F. So, there's a sentence missing in the Work Woman's Guide. There's actually, I looked on all the versions I could find online too, it's missing in all of them. So clearly it was never bothered to, it was never, she never bothered to correct it. So what I did is I took my computer, and I'm going to move the camera to show you. I have a program called GIMP, which is a free photo manipulation pro program. And I just took the image from online, and um, this is the exact pattern piece actually, and blew it up to the exact size of nine inches across. And then I was able to take this and realize, y'all can't see what I'm doing, y'all can't really see that anyway, that it hits the top again right about four inches. So let's go back over here. And this is full guesswork at this point, but we're gonna see if it works. If it does, y'all know what to do. So here's four inches, and we're going to make a mark. And it looks to be the same there, and it's just a curve. If you have a French curve, that'll make this so much easier. Here we go. Okay. And so there's our pattern piece. So we're going to go ahead and cut this out. So we're going to see how this makes up and see if it makes it look anything like the cap. Not terribly optimistic now that I know parts of it are, parts of the directions are missing. We're going to see how this works. But I'll go ahead and get out the fabric and we can go ahead and start cutting. Here's our cap. So this is our front, okay, sides and back. So what I may go ahead and do is put this on my head and go ahead and look in the mirror, see how it's looking, uh, making sure that it's going to go from where I want it to sit all the way to the back, um, plus an inch because that's what my seam allowance is. And then we'll come back and work on the plating. Okay, so it is a bit short. So um, when I put it on, these, say hello to the cat, um, I need to make this wider. It fit in the back very well, but it was just very short. This only went up to my ear. It's short, and I even know that there's extra there for seam allowance. So I know we're going to need to add at least an inch on either side right here. All 
Alrighty, I think that's going to work. So all I need is a few more inches. So I'm glad we did that before we started sewing because that would not be fun to do all that hand stitching and then figure out that it's not going to fit. So what we're going to do now is it says in making up, we're going to plate it behind in the center. So let's find our center again. Now I'm not entirely sure what it means. I plate it behind in the center, or rather large fold, seven on each side of the middle, wrapping the folds over each other to keep them all quite behind. So what I think it means is pleats. Well, plating is pleats, but it doesn't like give dimensions. So we're going to do one. We're going to do one on top of there. So there's two, three, four, five. It's getting hard to hold. Six, seven. I guess they need to be on top of each other. Seven on either side. That's a lot of bulk. Let's try this side, and then we'll test it and see if that worked. All right, let me go try this on and see what that looks like. Okay, I actually kind of like it. It um, works well. Um, still not sure because we're oh, there goes the vacuum cleaner. Um, close the door. Um, it does show ribbon casing, which has been drawn up tighter, so I don't really know what the purpose of this is, but that's what it says to do, and that's what we're going to do. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to redo them this time, and I'm going to measure out the plates so that they're all even. Usually the work we've done, it's very well laid out. I've never had an issue before, so this is actually quite surprising that I've come across one that was missing a, a whole spot in the pattern, and is it making up quite as well as I would like. But this part I think is what I'm going to bind. So what I'm going to do is do the hem here, which is just going to be ironing it a quarter inch and then a quarter of inch again, so that makes my half inch seam allowance that I added all around. I'm going to stop here, probably, and figure out how to add a binding there. So let me go ahead and iron this, and then we'll talk about the rest of it and figure that out. Okay, so I forgot I was filming, so I went ahead a few steps. Sorry. Um, so I went ahead, yes, and um, folded all that in, quarter inch to quarter inch, like I said I would do. And then I went ahead and took from where I want, wanted the binding, cut off a quarter of an inch, because I'm going to do a quarter inch binding. I don't want a huge bit of binding. I want it to kind of match the seam allowance. So I cut off in half, a quarter inch from here to here, cut an inch-ish in binding, um, and pinned it on. I would highly suggest doing this on the bias. It was kind of a tough to get around that curve. And then I'm going to just do a quarter inch seam all the way across and then fold it over, make a make a casing, and then sometime between folding it over and make it look so that nice, I need to make sure to add the ribbon in there. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this up. I'm probably not gonna film that because I'm gonna go sit down on the couch and relax while I do that and not stand up here and work on it from here. So, I will see you after that is done. Alrighty, so what I did is um, just stitch that down like we talked about, went ahead and ironed it, um, stitched along the edges that we already turned over, so I figured it's a good time to do that. And then I thought about how we're gonna do this ribbon. So here's the ribbon I'm gonna use for the ties. Um, there's really no way for it to come out, and so what I did is cut a little slit um, here in this between these folds. I'm going to do a buttonhole stitch just to make it like a little buttonhole to kind of finish that off, and that way the ribbons could come out like the uh, engraving shows. And I'm going to go ahead and put this under, attach the ribbons in here, and just attach them wherever the starts, stitch them all in, fold everything over, stitch that down. Um, and then this cap will basically be done. We're just going to add our trimming. So yeah, it's actually went together really easily. I'm curious to see how it's going to turn out and what it's going to look like on. Um, but yeah, let's um, go ahead and finish this up. And I will see you before I um, put on the lace. Alright, so there are the ribbons coming out of it. And so it kind of ties up very nicely. So it can be fitted to your head, which is awesome. So I have my lace here. Go ahead and start attaching that. So I'm going to pin that around. Probably use a running stitch to put that on. 
and then this cap will be done and we can try it on. So the cap that I'm kind of copying as far as trim placement goes has absolutely no gathering of the, of the ribbon or the lace that we're using. So that is what I am going to be doing, which is nice because that's a whole extra step I don't have to do now, which is the gathering bit of it. I'm going to finish all this and then I will be back when it's all stitched on. Alrighty, so the cap is essentially complete. Um, I put it on and it works okay. There's a little bagginess right behind my ears, which tells me I did not extend the casing wide enough. So my casing right now is seven inches from center back to where it ends. I would do it nine inches on either side if I were to do this again, but it's not really worth it to me to take it out and do it again. So we're going to leave it. Um, this cap, however, will not stay closed, will not stay on my head. So I'm going to have to put ties on it. Um, which is not shown in the engraving, but there are lots of other caps with ties, so I feel confident doing that. I think the original had ties. So I'm just going to take more of the silk ribbon, and I'm just going to attach it right here. And probably just whip all this in. I think we're going to go ahead and finish, or work on cap two, and then we can try these on. Okay, so we're going to work around the kitty for cap number two because she is taking up residence and I'm not moving her. So what I decided to do for this cap, because looking at the original, I decided it might be useful to show how to use some workwoman's guide patterns for a cap, even though the diagrams don't show up it being made up that way. So we saw the cap. We know what we're making. And so I figured that the, what was it? It was the dress morning cap on page 126, which was the first cap that I made up for the 1830s. It's the um, one made out of Swiss stock. So we're going to make both these out of Swiss stock. Perfect. So I just took that pattern because I kept the pattern, which you should always do. And I'm looking at the original and I'm noticing a couple things. One, that the front goes up further. And so I'm going to need to extend this a bit. And then also that there isn't so much poofing at the top, so I'm going to go ahead and take away some of the excess. So I'm going to go ahead and fold, and I'm just guessing here, so I have no idea if this is really going to help any, but I'm just going to take that up, just like that. This is the crown part. If you need help drafting this part, you can go back to the 1830s cat video and um, see how to make this pattern. And I'm taking up maybe... So it's about three quarters of an inch. Can I have this please? I'm I apologize. And I'm just going to match up these two edges. Yeah, it comes out. I'm not too worried about it. that piece. This piece we're going to try to go as far as we can. Another inch may do it. Let's see, it's probably not quite an inch. That is just shy of an inch. Yeah, but it's even all around. So we're going to go oops, ah, I had it perfect. <laughs> And this went out straight instead of coming, instead of doing what I did. This came out, the original has it coming out straight. Okay, now we can, okay, <laughs> she moved. Um, so we can pull this back down. So, I'm actually going to keep that over here. So I'm going to extend that, up. It's again, a little less, it's between one inch and half an inch. Then we're going to do that. Okay. So 
so I'm not messing with the width or anything because I know that fit my hair really well and I still have the same amount of hair even though it's going to be in a different placement and so I don't really want to mess with the width of this I don't want to mess with this because this part fit my head so I'm going to take out the middle I'm not going to take it from the bottom otherwise it'll make it too big because this extends okay so now we have this I'm going to go ahead and make our marks this was on a fold I'm going to put modified 1840s cap we'll pretend yeah we're going to put that it's modified from speakers 9, 10, and 11. I'm going to do the same thing here. This is on the fold. Okay. So now I have that. Always, always, always when you're doing this, Mark your patterns and keep them. You never know when you're gonna need them again. So this has been all. This is where I've been putting all the caps we've been making. So let's go ahead and get our fabric and go ahead and cut that out. video our first step is going to stitch the bead piece that she's through together so we're going to take oops that's the wrong side right sides together and there may be some gathering that needs to be done we're going to see if this is a made up pattern we don't know what we need to do yet but you know it. Okay, so there's going to be some pleating to do. So what I'm going to do is find the center. centers. Okay. And I would distribute the pleats a little bit more than just the center top this time, just because my hair won't be on the center top anymore. It's going to be kind of any more pleats than that. You could also gather this if you didn't want to pleat it. I just find pleating easier. Okay. So let's do the other part. Just making sure I have the same amount of pleats on either side. And now we can stitch this at a half inch seam allowance because I added half an inch. 
and then we can basically see if this cap's gonna fit or not. try that on and see how it fits. Okay, if we look at the original, it has a little curtain at the very back. I'm thinking maybe an inch and a half long, so we're going to cut a curtain for this. I'm going to measure this across and maybe do one and a half times that for the width. So that's 15, 7, let's cut it a little bit bigger just to be on the safe side we're gonna cut it 25 inches just all together and that will include seam allowances and such so I'm gonna iron this probably go ahead and fold it over twice to give me a nice little hem there and then we stitch that on and then stitch it onto the cap wherever that went to all right so cap is basically done I went ahead and applied the lace my lace is very tiny it should have been maybe twice that size to match the original, but I'm dealing with stuff in my stash. I didn't really buy stuff for this project. Let's go ahead and add some ties. I think I'm going to keep with the same size of tie that I did with the other one. So I'm going to measure out, I think it was 15 inches, maybe it was 20 inches. All right, here we are um, with an 1840 hairstyle-ish. That is not perfect because can't be bothered, I'm not just going anywhere. And you get me in my 1860s wrapper today just because I'm at that point in self-isolation that I am wearing this all day long. It's nice because I don't have to wear a corset or any other type of support garment. And yeah, it's comfortable. So this is where I'm at. Let's go and try on these caps. So here's the first one. She might stay on without that. Okay. It's very, very full. But yeah. Okay. And there's that cap. Fits very well. I think it feels more a little bit more like Victorian old lady-ish. Maybe just because it's not full of the sides, it's not pretty like the 1830s cats, but that's kind of the point. I'm not portraying a wealthy woman in the 1840s. And one decade where I get to portray someone poor. Alright, and the other one, the one that we modified from the 1830s cap, which I did like. So, okay, I like this one better. And it fit, yeah, okay, so it fits very well. I think at my hair, the right height for the 1840s actually made this fit a lot better. Surprising. When you actually do things right, things work. Can't feel these ties. There we go. Okay. That one I kind of like. I, kinda, I like the curtain. So yeah, those are my 1840s caps, which I now have and can use whenever we get back to doing events again. So yeah, I hope this was helpful um, to kind of see how to look at an original and use what patterns we do have to match them. But yeah, thanks for joining me and I will see you next time.